So, uh, so I mean, uh, he's uh, the the trust that the American people have put in Donald Trump uh, is there, and so he needs to reciprocate by having some stability in his administration. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, what we can hope to expect, right? And I think his sons are going to help him. Amen. Yeah. I agree. And yeah. J.D. Vance. Yes. All right. We uh, see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a great day. So right now may be the perfect time for you to rethink how you pay for health care. And here's why. This time of year is decision time for a lot of people, but it's also when you can join MediShare and save even more than usual. For many families, joining MediShare means saving about 500 bucks a month, which is a game changer for a lot of people, obviously. But what's more, MediShare members like it a lot. Their satisfaction rate is 98%. Imagine that. And MediShare is a proven thing, too, for over 30 years. It's a Christian community of hundreds of thousands of people now. And here's the thing. If you join before November 15th and you mention the promo code SHARE, they'll waive your application fee. So you save even more right off the bat. I'll give you the number here in a second, but just call and you'll get a price within two minutes. And again, the deadline is November 15th. So call now. You'll save even more. Here's the number. 833-44-BIBLE. That's 833-44-BIBLE. 833-44-BIBLE. This June marks two years since the overturn of Roe v. Wade. But did you know that the number of abortions actually increased the following year? Preborn continues to stand strong for women in crisis. Preborn is a ministry of compassion that showers women and babies with God's love, providing free ultrasounds to mothers to introduce them to the precious life growing inside them. When a mother meets her baby on ultrasound and hears their heartbeat, she's twice as likely to choose life. I'm going to keep my baby, and I'm going to be the great mom. $28 sponsors one ultrasound, and $140 helps to rescue five babies. Your generous tax-deductible donation will also help to provide women who choose life with assistance for up to two years. So please, give your best gift. To donate, dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. Or visit preborn.com slash AFR. Hello, this is Edward Graham, and I've got a great idea for you this Christmas. Through Operation Christmas Child, you can share hope with a child in need. Fill a shoebox with toys, school supplies, and hygiene items. Add your picture in an encouraging note. We'll deliver your shoebox gift to a child alongside the greatest gift of all, the good news of Jesus Christ. Visit SamaritansFirst.org slash OCC to get involved. That's SamaritansFirst.org slash OCC. Send joy to a child in need with Operation Christmas Child. Simply pack a shoebox with fun toys, school supplies, and hygiene items. Then bring it to a drop-off location during National Collection Week, November 18th through the 25th. You can also build a shoebox online. And the best part is the good news of Jesus Christ is shared alongside your gift. And each child is given the opportunity to participate in a life-changing discipleship program. Visit SamaritansFirst.org slash OCC to learn more. As Christians, how can we even begin to impact others when we live in a culture where truth is relative? It all starts with God's Word. Join us for Activate Summit 2025 at Cadence Bank Conference Center in Tupelo, Mississippi, June 12th through the 14th, 2025. The theme is Biblical Bedrock, Building on the Authority of Scripture, and it's designed to help you acknowledge the Bible's authority and submit to the clear teaching of Scripture. Hear from Abraham Hamilton III. The Lord has planted us here so that we make our space better. Ed Vitagliano. We use those kind of terms, be the hands and feet of Jesus. What would Jesus do if he were here? And Alex McFarland. God created because it was his will. The main sessions are for ages 13 and up, while Activate Kids is a separate track for ages 6 through 12. Register for Activate Summit 2025 by visiting activate.afa.net slash summit. Enter code <laughs> earlybird20 at checkout for 20% off tickets before January 1st. From this Egyptian escapade, they get back up into Canaan with more. They survived the famine, 
So oh, this is all good. No, they now have a bigger problem setting up for the future. When you disobey God, there's often bigger problems ahead for you. Welcome to In Grace with Jim Scudder the senior pastor of Quentin Road Baptist Church in suburban Chicago. He is also the host of In Grace TV, where adventure meets faith. Hi, welcome back to In Grace. Today we're going to be studying the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. And yesterday we learned that Abram and his wife Sarai are going to Egypt. They shouldn't have gone, I don't think. There was a famine in Israel and uh, the land of Canaan, as it was called then. And uh, he made a huge mistake, I think, by going, but he also made a bigger mistake by telling a white lie. He didn't want, you know, to be killed so that they could take his wife. So he said that it wasn't his wife, it was his sister. And although kind of technically it's true, it wasn't really true. So folks, if we're, if we're gonna learn anything in life, let's learn to be truthful, truthful. Folks, this is so important, and this is a lesson that all of us need to learn or relearn today. I've been talking about something really exciting, and we'll be getting into our study of Abraham in just a second. But we have some really unique Christmas items, and I know Thanksgiving is still a ways away, but I, I really think it's gonna take us a little time to get these in your hand. So if you wanna order them now, we have five beautiful, unique, original Christmas cards, and we're gonna send you two of each. We have one that's Mary and Joseph. Uh, Joseph is holding a lamp and they're looking out at Bethlehem and there's a little baby in Mary's arms and their shepherds coming. It's just beautiful, uh, an idyllic scene of Christmas. There's one of the baby in the manger. There's one of an angel proclaiming the good news. There's one of wise men on camels coming, looking at a star. And then there's ones of the shepherds that are hearing the announcement and heading toward Bethlehem. We're going to give you two of each of these for your gift of any amount to Grace, And your gift is doubled right now because we have a matching gift challenge. So I'd love to hear from you today. 1-800-78-GRACE or ingraceradio.com. Also, we've got from Bethlehem, 10 beautiful olive wood Christmas tree ornaments. And for your gift of $35 or more, we'll send you the 10 Christmas cards and the 10 ornaments. Again, olive wood from Bethlehem. Contact us today, 1-800-78-GRACE or ingraceradio.com. Now, why is he saying, say you're my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake? and my soul shall live because of thee. Now, what is the man supposed to do? What is the husband supposed to do? What, what is the purpose of God giving the man the authority to be the head of the wife? Why would God do that? And that's a biblical principle. We're equal, 100%. In God's eyes, we have the same exact value, and that's important to realize. But God has given the man the leadership in the home, and that's not wrong, okay? It's not wrong, it's right. But God did that, assuming that the man would be the protector and the provider, okay? Is he protecting her? No, he's actually saying, okay, if we go in there and they take you, they're gonna kill me. We have to go to Egypt, we have to, because we're gonna die if we don't, which wasn't true either. And maybe God did want them to go to Egypt, but God should have directed them or they should have talked about it with him and we don't have a recording of that. Either way, he should not have said, she's my sister, by implication, she's not my wife, because she was his wife. He was there to be her protector, and he failed at this. Why am I pointing this out? Not to be hard on Abraham, because I fail the Lord all the time, all the time. I'm pointing it out because some people assume that Abraham was saved because he was a good guy. And he was, I would say, generally speaking, a very amazing man, but not sinless not sinless as we're seeing here. Okay, so what did Sarah do? Well, I think this is an important part of scripture that God did not write down because we did not hear what Sarah said to Abraham, but either way, this is, this is what happened. There would probably be a whole another several books of the Bible to hear uh, what the wife thinks about the decision of the husband. 
So Genesis 12, uh, 14 says, And it came to pass that when Abram was come down into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. Exactly what he was worried about, they noticed her. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. So now Sarah has been taken. Okay. Now what's going to happen? Well, the plan is going to go forward. And he entreated, he being Pharaoh, Abram, well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. You're not supposed to say ass in church unless you're talking about a donkey, by the way. It's crazy, isn't it? How language changes. So Pharaoh gave a lot for Sarah. Okay. But was it worth it? No. Verse 17 says, and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Does that sound familiar? Plagues in Egypt? And releasing people because of the plagues? This is all interesting how it does picture something that is gonna happen in the future. So God says, nope, 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 nope. She's gonna be only Abraham's not yours, Pharaoh. Aren't you glad that sometimes God gets us out of our jams? Not to say it's right to get into the jams. We should try to avoid it, but it's going to happen. And, and if you love the Lord and you're faithful, he'll come through. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Good question, Pharaoh. Pharaoh's actually having some common sense here. Why dost thou say she's my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now, therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And that's what they did. Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. Now you might say, well, okay, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Everything that ends well is well. Is that right? <laughs> All's well that ends.